Leet code is impossible. This is what I felt like when I was staring at my first leak code question and when I was trying to get my first software job. I went through four years of a software degree. I did all these projects. I went through all these problem sets. I did all this work. And still, after all of that, these questions were just ridiculously hard. And I wasn't sure if I was ever going to get them. And at that moment, it made me think all kinds of things like, am I cut out for software? Is this career not for me? Will the real job actually be like this? Today, I wanted to share my personal experience about struggling when I was studying these interview questions, what I did to overcome it, and the advice that you can apply to your own life if you're also struggling. So to start, I wanted to share a story that is both a little bit embarrassing and humbling about my first ever software interview for this apprenticeship internship type position. At the time, I had not studied any of these software interview questions or lead code questions at all in my life. And I was barely aware they existed. And the interview started normally enough with me discussing like what I did in school, what my projects were, what I did for fun stuff like that. But then I was asked my first ever lead code question. And it's something that has become somewhat of a meme in the software interview world now. The question was FizzBuzz. If you don't know, this is an extremely basic programming question that isn't even really an interview question these days anymore. It's a question that's designed to filter out people who completely do not know how to code but say they do. And the question is so simple that literally someone with one week of programming experience could do it. The task is really simple. Output the numbers from one to 100. For each multiple of three, print fizz. For each multiple of five, print buzz. And for each multiple of three and five, print fizz buzz. And during the interview, I struggled for like 30 minutes trying to do this question. And because my first programming language was Python, I tried to do all kinds of crazy things like putting an else statement inside the for loops and stuff like that. And I just wrote all other kinds of convoluted, confusing code. And the pressure of the interview, it just got to me. And it was just deeply, deeply embarrassing because I was three years into a computer science degree and I could not solve this question. I had been doing class projects, assignments, I had been coding during school, but I hadn't been coding every single day. And this was the result of that. And so instead of using this experience as a wake up call for me to study more interview questions in preparation for how companies interview in the future, instead I procrastinated for a year. And it wasn't until the summer after graduation that I took studying lead code actually seriously again. And when I actually started to sit down and study these questions, my first thought was just, this is so hard. I struggled even with the questions that were tagged easy on lead code, sometimes taking just hours to do them. All the while just missing like a whole bunch of edge cases. And when I finally fixed all these edge cases, my solution was too slow. And then by that point, I couldn't debug my code because it was too confusing to even work through. And then I started to create a sense of avoidance in my head regarding these questions. I felt like I wasn't getting better. And if we're being honest, I didn't want to put more time and effort into getting better. What I did instead was I would study questions right before an interview in hopes that I would somehow be asked the right questions or the same exact questions that I knew how to do so that I could hopefully pass all these interviews without putting in the work. And that summer, I started to get all of these automated online assessments through my email where these were basically tests where you had to solve like three lead code medium questions in 90 minutes or something. And I remember of all these tests, I couldn't even solve like one of these problems in 90 minutes. I had a lot of moments that summer and afterwards where I was just staring at how much work I would have to do to become even competitive for these interviews to even land any kind of job. You know, I had like cracking the coding interview on my desk. I had leak code open on my computer and then I would just sit there and I would try to do anything else besides study. But since then, I've realized that just like anything else in life, getting good at lead code just takes time and effort. And in that time before, it's going to be a frustrating process. And it wasn't until after I left school and I was at home, did the pressure build more and more and more for me to get a software job and in turn to really push myself to study these questions and get better. And it took me like even a month before I felt remotely competent. So now that I've been working in a software job for a while now, I can actually answer the question as to how much does leak code help you on the day to day job. And I've come to realize that leak code is a skill set entirely on its own. Like it doesn't even relate to most of the actual job because doing leak code requires a lot of 
fundamental and really niche knowledge, like all these steps like binary search or like the two pointer method, like sliding windows, like all of these niche topics, you'll never use any of these concepts on the job at all. But I do think that doing lead code does make you a better programmer over time. Because for me, the difference between before I knew how to study lead code questions and after was night and day. Because it really helps with my ability to grasp these complex coding problems, to like hold edge cases in my brain and to really break down solutions into smaller, more manageable chunks. But I think the biggest thing that lead code helped me with most on the job is being more comfortable with these uncomfortable, anxious moments where you don't know the answer to a problem. Because difficult problems that you don't immediately know to solve, they come up all the time in a software job. So that's probably the biggest parallel you can draw between lead code and the actual job. So are you completely screwed in terms of getting a software job if you can't do these questions? I don't really think so. First of all, there are a whole bunch of companies that hire without lead code. But some of these companies have alternate assessment methods that might be equally difficult, like system design or object-oriented design and other things like that. So use this list at your own discretion. But even if we're talking about the general market outside of these specific companies, I don't think you're screwed if you don't know how to lead code. Just to give some experience on the companies I've interviewed for in my life, in my first job, the interview with that one asked very basic lead code questions, which was basically equivalent to reading like the first four chapters of cracking the coding interview. I was asked to build like a simple linked list. I was asked to do a depth or search on a tree or something. And I was asked to reverse a linked list. So it required some knowledge of data structures and algorithms, but not an extensive amount. And in my second job, I wasn't asked any lead code at all. Instead, I was mostly asked like very niche JavaScript questions like truthy, falsy values or differences between callbacks, promises, async await, or like how closures work and stuff like that. No lead code really required. And in my third job, the phone interview did require a decently difficult lead code question, but the onsite interview was mostly focused on building out a web application and then having that application assessed by engineers. And in my fourth job, there was just no lead code questions asked. I was asked to build like a React application. I was asked to scrape through the Reddit API with some Python code. And I did some product building exercises and stuff like that, and I was hired. So in my six years in the industry, while lead code popped up here and there, it was never used that extensively as far as the jobs that I worked at. But there is a major exception. If you're interviewing for top tech companies in Silicon Valley, there is no getting away from lead code. All the top companies that I've interviewed at, like Meta, Amazon, Google, Netflix, they all ask pretty difficult lead code questions. There's no getting around it. And it requires literally months of preparation. But to end this video, I wanted to give another simple anecdote. I compare learning lead code similarly to learning how to drive a car for the first time. You know, the first time you get into a car and are driving around, you feel like everything's out of control. You're like over adjusting all your turns. You feel like everything is really loud and noisy and scary. And then you think to yourself like, man, how did anyone else learn how to drive? But even after a few more times in the car, you start to get it. You know, you start to apply your muscle memory and you start to learn. Lead code is pretty much the same for me. It's extremely confusing at first. Nothing seems to make sense, but the more you do it little by little every day, the more everything comes together at once. If you like this video, you might want to check out this video about controversial software tips that actually work. And subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.